Hey everybody, if you're wondering how you can own your own masters and increase profits, then you might want to stick around for this episode because I'm going to show you how you can do that in a nutshell, coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham and on this episode we're talking about how you can own your own masters and increase your profits. And one way you can start is by downloading the Profit Maximization Checklist right down below and the Musician's Guide to Self-Publishing. Now, in that Profit Maximizer Checklist, right, it, I'm gonna be expounding upon that because I think that some people may get it and never use it. I know a lot of you have. I haven't gotten a lot of responses back on what to do with it, so I'm gonna expand it. So look out for that coming soon because I think this is more important than anything else. Now. What do we do? How do we increase profits and own our masters at the same time? Because you might have seen in some comments or on certain videos, I've said that artists do not technically own 100% of their masters. And that's true, but we can have a majority stake. So now that we've gotten that out the way and that the elephant out of the room, let's talk about owning these masters, having the ownership, right? And increasing your profit. And I'm going to show you why that kind of ties in there. So we got to go back to square one, okay? So we got to talk about if we're going to increase profit, there can't be any, you know, things in the way. It can't deter us from our goal. So we have to know who we are and what we're doing and what we're making. We got to define our niche. We also have to define our genre totally because we can't say that we're uh, trap artists, but then, you know, we, we do, we, and, and, and then have someone say we're hip hop artists. Like it's two different things. It's very, that's the subgenre of the whole genre, right? And then once we determine that, we have to begin to build our audience. Now that's a video in and of itself, but we're gonna leave it in a nutshell right here on the table. We have to begin to build this audience once we figure out who we are and what we're doing. Because if we know who we are, and what we're doing in our genre, then when we start to build an audience, we can say, okay, this audience will potentially give us this much income. All right, so that's, the, that's, that's some, some advanced marketing methods. But once we know the audience and the playing field we're gonna be dealing with, we're gonna know how much material we need to put out and market, all right? And then we're gonna know how frequently the dollars will roll in after that, okay? So now, we gotta collect this money. That's what the profit maximization checklist is for down below. And then we gotta track it. Now, all that is in that down down below. And this is, I usually don't plug that all the time, except for in the beginning or end of my videos. But we're, you gotta, if you're gonna own this stuff and increase profits, you gotta know what you're doing. So let's go back over this, this first section again. We said we have to know our niche. We gotta know our genre, and then from there we'll know the audience, all right? Then from there, if we know the audience, then we can start marketing to that audience. Now, I didn't say spending ad dollars, I'm just saying marketing, creating content, creating product to push out to that audience, okay? Then, from there, we have to build this system, or set up the accounts, rather, in order to receive all the funds coming back to us, all right? So now that we got that, we're in a good position. We have some infrastructure built, all right? Now, the next thing that we wanna look at here is, okay, if we're building this thing right here, this, this, we got this whole system done, all right? We want to scale this system. What, 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 what are we gonna be doing here? The first thing is we have to go through a trial period, seeing what works when we start creating the content and the music, what doesn't work, what people resonate with from you now, because we can't go to everybody else and use everybody as an example. It's unique to you. That's where that's where people get lost in the sauce in the music industry. Oh, such and such did that, I'm gonna do that. Or such and such did this, I'm gonna do that. But it doesn't, it's unique to you, right? Like for me, I started making beat videos on Instagram. Yes, I'm a music producer, right? You can go look me up. You can see some credits and a lot of things that I've done on and off record. Well, that's great, but it didn't really work. But the one thing that I was gaining was knowledge in this business. And then this teaching about the business worked and it put me in a position where people could say, I will receive what it is you're doing and then I will soak it in and I'll take anything else, right? So we established what it is we will be doing and delivering to the public, all right? Now, 
once we've built our system, if you go back, see my YouTube channel hasn't been up for that long. If you go back to the beginning, and I have videos that are like an hour long that came from Facebook a year and six months ago that are in season one on my YouTube channel. They don't have many views, all right? But I started this YouTube channel on January 28th this year, and I grew it, and people responded to it, all right? Now that my system is built, you all can go to musicmoneymakeover.com. You can download my free stuff below and some paid stuff below, all right? You can, and, and now you can see that if I was now to pour marketing dollars on this, it would be able to sustain itself. But if I was to pour marketing dollars on this thing before it was anything, like if you ever seen the Facebook movie and they were talking about, we need to run ads on it. And the other guy was like, well, we don't even know what it is. You know, Mark was like, we don't even know what it is. How can we run ads? It's the same thing with you all. If you don't know how the public's gonna respond to your music, if you don't start making some traction, some sales, some anything, you can't pour marketing dollars on that. But when you've now gotten there, you've gotten a stronghold a little bit. You see that, oh, this is working. People are paying money. They are staying with us. They are becoming fans of us, all right? We are becoming their favorite band, their favorite artist. All right, now let's pour some marketing dollars on, okay? And, this, and let's start scaling the system. Now, scaling is another video in and of itself yet again. But now that we've completely worked on this first section, let's go to section two, all right? Or two options, rather, I'm going to give you. So if we want to increase some profits, we might have poured out all of the marketing dollars we have. The next step would be to sign some type of deal with a label system, all right? But because we own our masters in the beginning and we now have a little bit of leverage, we created leverage, I'll put that right there, leverage. We created some leverage in our system we don't have to go to the record labels empty handed and get all of these screw these deals that screw you that everybody's talking about. We're making a business deal. That's what we're doing. We're making a business deal right here. All right. Your goal is to go to the table with what you have, sit down, come up with some numbers that would make sense for you and your operation for you to retain a majority stake in your master. All right. And you want to look for a number that you can pay back to where it's not, oh my gosh, I gotta take so much money, millions of dollars, I never had it, but what you don't realize is you're borrowing against your future earnings. So you wanna make sure that you borrow enough to increase your profit, but not too much to where you lose ownership. Message! That's the whole goal in negotiation of a record deal. Borrow enough to increase the profit, but you don't borrow so much that you lose the ownership. Boom, that's it. Now, our next option, instead of using the record label, would be to use an investor. Now, you got to screen your investors. Investors don't really know how the music industry works a lot of the time, all right? They just want to invest their money and get something back. Now, this is more advanced because you have to know how the music business actually works to take investor dollars, private dollars, hard cash, private cash, hard lenders. You got to know how the structure of the music business works in order to take on cash from someone who doesn't know how it works and pay it back. All right. So I'll give you a quick little scenario on this. Okay. So we take some hard cash some hard lenders, some private lender, private money on. Okay. We're going to set an interest rate. Let's say we take a hundred thousand dollars. All right. And we'll, we'll, we'll lock in the interest rate at, let's say, and we're not even going to use percentages. We're gonna say, I'll take $100,000 and I'll pay you uh, 125 back in two years or two and a half years. And then I'll guarantee that you get your money back in two or two and a half years, all right? And if I don't get it back to you, then I'll give you a penalty of $10,000, right? So in all in all, I'll have to pay you $135,000, all right? Now, because you will give someone a guarantee and then they can bring in their dollars and add it with what you already have. You can you can kind of you can kind of loosen your shoulders a little bit because you're not necessarily doing a record contract. Now, like I always say in all my videos, record contracts are not technically bad. You just have to negotiate. You get what 
you negotiate. If you don't know what you're doing, don't go getting in a contract that's gonna give you millions of dollars and take all your ownership. That ain't the key here. Everybody works in this industry. You're already working amongst big players in the game once you say you're gonna start, okay? Everybody depends on everybody in this industry. It's just that the big people at the top will try to take advantage if you let them. You know, the only way you don't let them take advantage of you is if you have the knowledge of doing it yourself or knowing what it is you're getting yourself into. That's why I suggested uh, the second option of private hard cash. But like I said, again, you got to know what you're doing to be able to take on someone's money and give it back. All right. So now let's talk about giving this back for a little bit and then and then um and then uh and then i'll take some questions i'll, I'll, I'll take some questions like this is live no not really but let's talk about um you know how we're going to take this and, and paying it back because we talked about setting the interest rate doing the 125 taking a hundred thousand dollars and all that here's a, here's my suggestion my strategy to you if you're going to go this route if you're going to take private money and pay it back over a set number of time. Like you got your in and your out and a penalty if you don't, all right? It's safe for you that way only if you know what you're doing. But the, the beautiful thing about this is that if you take private money, you can pay that money back from anywhere, okay? It can be from your merch, it can be from your touring, it can be from, hey, I just need to borrow money, I'll give it back to you at this rate can't really do that with a record label because that's not how record labels work, okay? You're generating money from your record label sales, your merchandise, your mechanical royalties, your performance royalties, your sound exchange, you know what I'm saying? Your booking appearances, your social media, uh, you know, uh, influencer product placement, like you're getting money from everywhere and only thing you needed was an influx of cash. So, you know, I get, I'm look, I, I know this is a lot, but I want to put a lot on the table so you think about it. And if you got questions to this, please drop them below because I can see that owning masters is an important thing to a lot of people in the music community. And I want to make sure that I express how it is you can do business with these masters. Understand, you can't own 100% of the master if you're going to scale your business. Message. All right. And on that note, I'm getting out of here. Make sure you download the Profit Maximization Checklist right down below and the Musician's Guide to Self-Publishing right down below. Contact me on musicmoneymakeover.com and I will see you all next week. Peace. <laughs>